Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com. Welcome to Mastering On One Photo Raw 2018. In this video, we're going to take a close look at the bleach bypass filter that's found in the effects module of On One Photo Raw 2018. This is an image I'd like to add that filter to, so I'm going to click on Add Filter and go down to Bleach Bypass. And you can see as soon as I added the filter, it did something to the image. There's before and there's after. Well, what exactly does Bleach Bypass do? Well, you actually could do a lot with this filter and get a very wide range of looks. But generally speaking, the Bleach Bypass filter will kind of bleach out some of the color and add a lot of contrast to the image. It is a filter that, in my opinion, that is best used on images of musicians, artists, uh, certain types of fashion photography, specifically street fashion. I think this filter shines, and I think you'll often see this look on a lot of street fashion images. Now, as we look at the filter, like most on one filters across the top are the styles and right when I turned on the filter or applied the filter the style that was applied was normal to the right of that we have lighter then we have darker then we have strong and below that or to the right of that I'm sorry there's a drop down and there's a few more styles in this drop down we have high key cool high key warm and Omaha Beach so you could come in and just preview all those different styles to see if there's something there that you like. Or you could go over to the left-hand panel where it says Filters, click on that, and you'll see all those styles are here in small postage stamps so you could compare one to the other. You also could click on this little set of four, I call them bricks, and when you do, you'll have larger views of each of those styles. So you could pick one you like. Let's say you like Omaha Beach, just click on it, and there it is. Now really, the best part of this filter probably isn't the styles. It's that you could really dial in a style all your own. To do that, I'm going to start out with normal. So all the sliders are at the middle center position. And you could see that there's a mount. This is just how strong do you want the filter to be. If you go to the left, it's weaker. Go to the right, it's stronger. It's it acts very similarly to the opacity slider at the top, which is found in all on one effects filters. So it works very similarly to that. So you could come in and just put the amount in. Usually I come up to that last. I kind of work that this I kind of work this backwards and we'll get to that in a minute. We have the brightness slider, which affects everything in the image, so you can make the whole image brighter or darker. Double click on the name of the slider to reset it back to its default position. Contrast affects everything. Increase or decrease contrast. Detail affects everything and it's a very powerful slider. If I move it to the right, you'll increase detail. If you go way far to the right, you'll really get that kind of HDR over the top look. If I start going to the left of center, you'll start softening the image and give it a very kind of blurry ethereal look and you can see how it goes really strong. So you could do quite a bit with that detail slider. Saturation, if I move that to the right, I increase color saturation in the whole image. Move to the left, I decrease color saturation of the entire image. Below that is this small section called tint that consists really of two sliders, hue and amount. If amount is at zero as it is now, hue won't do anything. A lot of people like to give their images a color tint. So what you could do is you could come in with hue and you can see there's kind of a preview of the color right on the bar itself. So you could preview in or dial in hue to a color you like. I like a cooler color over here. And then start moving the amount slider to the right. And you can see now how the entire image gets tinted that color. The more I move to the right, the stronger it's going to be. So you could tint the image a very specific color that you like. Now I mentioned that I kind of work this um, filter backwards. I usually determine early on that I want whether or not I want the image to have a color tint. So I will do that first. So I would come in here and dial in a bit of a tint. 
Then I kind of jump around on here. Usually I'll go to detail next because I think that's a pretty important slider. And I'll move that to the right a little bit. Usually, sometimes I'm not one that likes soft, ethereal kind of images like that. Kind of like it a little more detailed to the right. But then I start messing around with brightness and contrast. So in this image here, I think I want it very contrasty and I kind of want their faces to kind of pop out at us. So I want you know, high contrast between their skin tones and everything else around their faces. So I want, want it like that. Then I'll come up here with a mount, move that a little more to the right. Um, saturation, I think I'll take down a little bit, suck out a little bit of color. Now I'm going looking at it and I think detail might be a little too high, so I'll pull that down quite a bit, just about to zero. So it's kind of the crazy look I want in this image. Of course, when you're processing an image of musicians, your processing is going to be kind of paralleled to the type of music they play. These guys are pop punk artists, so I want this kind of dark, grungy look to their uh, image, their photo. If they were classical musicians, I'd probably do something light and airy, and I wouldn't even use the bleach bypass filter. So, you know, you got to kind of gear your processing to what you're processing, of course. And also, I should add, I didn't really specify it. This filter does do a nice job on some landscape images, too. You could really give your landscape images a very unique look. Once you come up with a look that you really like, that you think is yours, you could create your own style so that you could more easily apply it to future images. Go to this drop down and then go down to save new style. Click right there and give it a name. I'll call this my style. And click save. Now on this drop down at the very top you'll see my style. So if we just open up the filter, I'll close it, and I add the bleach bypass filter. You could see it added this normal, but I want to add my style. Go to more, my style, and there it put the sliders back where they were and it gave me my look. And this is probably how a lot of those Instagram photographers get that consistent look throughout their images is they used a program that allows them to create a preset or their own style that they could apply to future images. So come up with something you like, um, no matter what filter you use, but really with this bleach bypass filter, you really could come up with a look that is all yours and save it as a style. And then uh, maybe I'll get an email someday from someone else asking me how you processed your image to get that look. That's it for this video. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.